Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Quick Tech Tips and Reviews. My name is Tony and this channel brings you a variety of tech related content. If this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe and hit that little bell down below so that you are alerted to when new videos are being released. So today we're going to take a look at how to back up your Synology NAS to an external USB drive using Hyper Backup. Okay, so let's get started. As you can see, I'm signed into my Synology NAS. And the first thing you need to do is make sure that Hyper Backup is installed on your NAS. So you can check your main menu to see if it was installed during the initial setup process. As you can see, mine was. However, if yours wasn't, go to your package center, click on Backup, locate Hyper Backup, and click the Install button. Now mine is open because it's already installed. Once you click the install button, just follow the on-screen prompts to get Hyper Backup installed on your NAS. All right, so now that you guys have successfully installed Hyper Backup on your own NAS, let's launch Hyper Backup from the main menu and get started with our backup task. So I'm gonna take my Time Machine shared folder from my Synology NAS and back it up to the external USB drive. As you can see by the picture, I already have the drive plugged into the NAS. So let's get started. Let's click on the plus sign to create a new backup task. And we're going to select data backup task. Here we have a whole bunch of backup destinations to choose from. For this video, we're going to use local shared folder and external storage because we want to take it to an external drive. However, you could back up to a remote, a remote Synology NAS either somewhere else on your network or somewhere else located on the internet. You also can back up to a whole bunch of other cloud services. Look down the list. You can see Dropbox, Google Drive, Amazon Web Services, etc. So we're going to select local shared folder and external drive and click next. And we're going to click our backup destination. So we're going to create a backup task and we want to back that up to the USB share, which is the USB external drive. And we're going to give the directory a name. So I'm going to call it Tony Time Machine Backup. And we'll say Next. And here we're going to select our source folder. So the folder that we want to back up to the external drive. So I'm going to select Tony's Time Machine Backup and go ahead and say Next. It gives you the option to back up particular applications. I'm not going to select any for the purpose of this video, so I'm just going to say Next. And on this screen, we can give our task the actual name, so we'll call it Tony's Time Machine Backup. And this is what appears in that list in this area here. So, I like to enable task notification, but you have to go to your control panel and your notifications to set this up. So what happens every time I get a successful backup, I'll get a notification email letting me know that things were successful. Or obviously if things didn't go well, it will let me know that as well. I'm going to leave the data compressed so it takes up less space on the external drive. I want to schedule the backup. So I want this to, uh, I want this backup to happen overnight. So I'm going to leave it set for 3, but I'm going to change this to 3.15 because I, only because I think one of my other backups are taking place at 3 o'clock. I'm going to enable uh, the integrity check. I'm going to have it do that weekly. Um, again, I'm going to make this 5.15 just so it doesn't conflict with any of the other tasks that the NAS is already doing, but you could schedule this um, to your preferences. And now I'm going to go ahead and say next. And now you have the option of enabling backup rotation. So I'm going to do that. You don't have to do that. And I'm going to leave it set from the earliest versions. I don't need 256 versions, especially when you think about the fact that my time machine backup itself has multiple versions being saved. So I'm going to reduce this number of versions that's being sent to the external drive from 256 down to 64. And you can see now it changed the timeline from nine months to nine weeks. And, and that's totally fine. And again, this is personal preference for you, whatever works best. And I'm going to go ahead and say apply. And 
And the final step is to go ahead and initiate the backup. So since I really do want to do this, and I am doing it also for the purpose of the video, I am going to go ahead and say backup now. So this is going to take quite a bit of time because it's the initial backup. Subsequent backups happen much quicker. So that about wraps it up for today, guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure to check out the link to some of my other Synology videos. Please remember to subscribe, like, and share. My name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions. Thanks for watching. See you next time.